we might want to ponder and pontificate, if you will, which we do quite often on this podcast. What is the best production from last year compared to this year? Which unit on this team has impressed us in camp and has improved the most? We're going to give you candidates. We're going to give you three, two, one next on Locked on Bulldogs. You are Locked on Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Locked on Bulldogs podcast. He is Clint. I am Daniel. Your team every day, Locked on Bulldogs, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Thanks for FanDuel for bringing us today's episode, episode fanduel.com slash locked on. Thank you to the 199, who are the loyal third segment listeners who are here every day. Listen until the third segment. And um, I think they're going to like that one upstairs. Really kept it tight in the cold open, Clint. I think I think that one's going to be fine. I don't see any issues there. We are talking about units that improved the most from mm-hmm. last year to this year. So this is a bit of a bit of what we've seen in camp. So no, we have seen some things from some of these units. This is not all speculation. This is not all just mm-hmm. random talk. We have seen some things, but it is a bit of it is a bit of projection, if you sure. will. It's not full on looking into a candle, but it is projecting what we think is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Units last year, whether they were great and getting even greater or subpar and getting to be outstanding, which of the units do we expect to improve the most heading into last year? And I'm going to start us with what I think with the third most third best improved unit. So if you want to if you want to hear number 1, you listen to the third segment. That's how it goes. Become and it's a part bit, of 199. This is a this one's going to be a bit of a a thinker, but if you'll just allow me a minute to explain, right. I think you'll see that it's going it's going to make a ton of sense. Right, Typically right. when you think about improved production, Clint, you think about guys coming in who raise the, the level of talent to raise the, the, the value of a certain unit. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to tell you there's another way to improve, and that is you got the same guys, but or in did. this case, guy, mm. but he just gets a lot better. I think the quarterback position, Clint, is where I want to start in this conversation because we, talked, we talked about him – was it yesterday? Was it two days ago? I don't know. They yesterday. all run together on the podcast. Um, go back and listen to it if you didn't. We think Carson Beck's got a chance to become the second greatest quarterback in the history of Georgia football. And I made the argument that he won't even have to do that much to become the second greatest quarterback in the history of Georgia football. I think the quarterback position is going to elevate. You hear Kirby Smart talking about that. You hear him talking about the confidence that he has in Carson Beck, about the freedom that Carson Beck has, about how really quarterback production is about the guys around him. Can we get the guys around him to help him be the best version of himself? You listen to Kirby talk, and you remember the early days of Kirby Smart, Clint? Oh, when we couldn't <laughs> when we couldn't find a quarterback. Kirby had never met a quarterback that he liked. He had never met a quarterback nope. that he was confident in. He now all of a sudden these last few years, Clint mm-hmm. Stetson's second year. Sure, definitely not Stetson's first year, but no. Stetson's second year, and now Carson Beck's first year. Now going into Carson Beck's second year. Kirby is very comfortable with the quarterback situation. Seems to be very confident about Carson Beck. He's hungry. He wants to improve. He wants to see that draft stock continue to elevate. And I think we're going to see Georgia's offense evolve and take a step around Carson Beck's skill set. And oh, by the way, his skill set is absolutely throwing the ball into windows and down the field, making reads and making all of the throws. I 
I'm very excited about what Carson Beck is going to do this year for this Georgia team. And even though the quarterback position was quite good last year, an asset on our team, I anticipate it's going to get even better this year. I think there's a really good chance Carson Beck could end up in New York at the end of the year. I do as well. I think he will be in the running for Heisman. Uh, You've listed it all. We're going to get to a maybe, maybe a couple other units that have improved vastly. But if you look at the supporting talent that he has around him, it's incredible. Offensive line is stabilized with incredible balance as well as Ernest Green over there protecting him on the left side. Right side is going to be somebody that we trust. And Carson Beck has improved since last year. Stellar campaign. Sorry, but, somebody that we trust is what he said. He said somebody. That we, <laughs> you see how it, it just works either way. It works either way. The right, the right tackle is going to be somebody that we trust. My bucket is needed now. You need your bucket yesterday. I need my bucket today. Um, Look, I think Carson Beck, all he does is be professional. He He's a very chill attitude. He's very cerebral. Cerebral. He gets his job done, and I think there's no reason to suspect that he's going to have a drop-off. I think that that you might find you want to say he stagnates and he just is what he was last year. Okay, I'll I'll take that. No problem. That's the floor, and that would be quite good. Quite good. So I do I do think the quarterback room has improved. I think guys coming in uh, this year on the roster, if you want to look at the quarterback depth chart overall, I, I think is just fine in my book. Mm-hmm. Um, Gunnar Stockton, a okay with me, Puglisi coming in just fine. Yeah. I think, I think the quarterback room has improved completely agree with you. We're going to get to a couple other teams or a couple other units on this team. That might be the reason why Carson Beck has hopes for his New mm-hmm. York invitation Heisman. But first these, these are in fact, FanDuel. The sports calendar is loaded and FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning bet of $5 or more. That's $200 you can use to bet the tourney, MLB, NBA, NHL, and so much more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make your first bet a big win. Daniel and I love this place. It's our official sports book. It should be your official sports book and it's the official sports book of Locked On Bulldogs. We love it. We make money over there. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, the number Clint, second most improved unit. Where do you want to go next? This is going to be very interesting because I think there are th- there might be one that I will fight you on if it is improved or not. I, I think okay. it has to be. A- and so maybe let's just talk about the contenders, Daniel. Let's talk about the three remaining Ooh, okay. contenders, if you will. Okay. Okay. And I think when you talk improvement, it better be two of the three better be on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, I was just about to say, we've already named one offense, and if the de- if we don't name at least a couple defensive positions, um, the bucket's coming out. Yeah. So defensive line and linebackers is where I'm looking for improvement. Now, C.J. Allen, J.D.J., gone to Kentucky. C.J. Allen takes over. Smile Mondin is there as well. Mm-hmm. Raylan uh, Wilson. Raylan Wilson, Knowles, the whole the whole thing. Okay, our Bulls, sorry. Um, you look at the defensive line. We have a couple of guys coming back. Brinson, Stackhouse, Christian Miller. But a couple of younger guys, uh, Jordan Hall, um, mm-hmm. uh, Michael Williams gets a position change. So the defensive line as a whole, guys with their hands on the, the ground or maybe one up on the edge, um, has some room for improvement on both sides. And then I'm going to add a third one into the mix. And this one's going to kind of be like a, a three for the loop. Because if you look at where the wide receivers are, Daniel, Mm. I know we had incredible receivers last year, but I'm just letting you know right now. Right now, you're saying we are going to lose one of the most productive wide receivers that Georgia has known, and Marcus Roseme, who's no slouch in his own right. Correct. And then you're saying we're going to improve. The reason I I can't name us improved drastically, the most improved at wide receiver, is because Brock Bowers is gone. I can't do it, but I'm just letting you know right now. Sneaky, 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 Daniel. Yeah. Uh, Dom Lovett, Dylan Bell with another year. Uh, CJ. uh, I I mean, uh, there is lots of reasons to be 
thrilled. Transfers, Colby Young, Humphreys, thrilled with the improvement on that. But I can't go there because we like Okay, so my number two, Daniel, is going to be the inside linebackers mm. simply because CJ gets another year full camp in it. I can't say drastically improved because JDJ was a good linebacker. I know he is gone. He, he is was. Not a, he, he was. He pa- was. But it was just, we could just leave it there. He was a good linebacker. I dare you to argue that sentence. Nope. Can't do <clears> it. Nope. I'm sure at one point in his life, he was a good linebacker. Yeah. Um, It certainly was not down the stretch. Um, JDJ is off. CJ Allen is there. Uh, Raylan Wilson, Troy Bowles. Uh, This linebacker group, I think by by subtraction and by allowing the athleticism to play and by what I think is going to be a vastly improved defensive scheme all around, um, I'm excited for this group because CJ was lacking the mental ability. He was not lacking the, the speed the hit, um, uh, the the ability to cover. Uh, Smile Mondo was not lacking any of those. What they were lacking is mm. depth of understanding. And they were lacking it a great deal. You could see it written all over CJ's face. He was lost at times, having yeah. to read instead of react. And if you get an athletic linebacker who can hit hard, busy reading and not busy reacting, Here we you go. have won. And that's exactly what happened last year. People won because they they had schematic ability to go ahead and get some um, some fake pulling guards or some fake pulling tackles, uh, throw you off, get your reads and your keys all up in a tizzy. Wasn't good for anybody, but I think this year it's going to be drastically improved because there's not this weird shuffle. There's not guys who are slowing down. If you notice last year, we had to go ahead and change play calls a couple of times depending who was out there in mm-hmm. personnel because they were slower than other people and then cj got in he's faster than other people but he doesn't have the ability to pick up the same zone as somebody else so it was a weird mix this year i i, I have no problem anticipating the inside linebackers being drastically improved full year under his belt right next to very gifted athletes uh daniel this linebacking core was a major concern for me last year. It's not a major concern for me this year. It's still a concern, just not a major concern because I think they've taken many, many steps towards progress. Yeah. Uh, do you agree? It's it's development. That's why the group is going to be better than it was last year. You could sum it all up in one word, and it's, it's the fact that there's nobody better in the country at developing players than Glenn Schumann. There's, there there's just not. There's no position coach in the country that is that is better, no coordinator that does it better than he does. He's proven it time in and time out. This is his unit. This is his group. And um, just look at the track record. I mean, when has he missed? You tell me when the last time he missed was. And then you're telling me that these these young guys, Raylan Wilson, who, by the way, was coming off injury last fall and therefore Uh didn't get as much work in camp. That's why C.J. Allen was ahead of him so far moving into the season last year because he was Correct. able to get more reps. And then he comes along as the season progresses. CJ Allen gets a full season under his belt. Now smile mod back and it's those three guys along with um, bulls who is, I think is going to play and factor in to this rotation after playing a lot on special teams. I, it's, it's the fact that these guys have been developed in the system. That's they're going to be better because they always get better. They but, always like, do. They just, I don't mean to be reductionistic here, but tell me the last time they didn't get better. Like middle linebackers of Georgia, go ahead. <laughs> but they don't, it's, they always get better. And so you got two true freshmen who get a full yeah. season of SEC experience. And now they're coming back for another year and the game slows down for them and they speed up and it it is, is mm. a recipe for mm. almost I think they would be my number one, honestly. You put them at two, okay. that's fine. I think okay. they would be this group would be my number one because A, I think Smile Monda is poised for a monster of a yeah, year. I I am talking a lot about CJ Allen, and admittedly, I appreciate him, but I and I him. agree with Daniel. I agree with yeah. Daniel. Smile Monda is poised for a monster of a year. I think he's going to um remind us why he's the alpha, the true alpha in the room. But I think all three of those guys are going to have great years, and I think George is going to be set up 
at um, this position for a while to come. I expect a ton of improvement. I need a ton of improvement. I want to be liked. I have to be liked. I like to be liked, but I don't need to be liked. Um, I, I need a ton of improvement from this inside linebacker group yeah. if I'm going to survive the season, but I think I'm going to get it. We got we got another group we're going to go through. Clint already gave you some contenders. I'm going to throw another contender into the mix. We might, we might duke it out in the third segment for the 199 coming up right after this. We love Fire TV because... It Love gives it. you everything you want, and it doesn't give you what you don't want. You see how channels should work. <sighs> channels yeah, should yeah, work, yeah, Daniel, yeah, 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 where yeah, you yeah. get what you want, and what you don't want doesn't randomly show it up. Doesn't on just channels. pop up on your right. channel like I didn't want that. This is this is HGTV. Why uh -huh. are you showing me horror films? See, it like, doesn't I don't, match. It's a one of these things is not like the other, right? Fire TV is a destination for sports, live games, highlights, in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing view experiences with smart TVs as well as Fire TV Stick that you can plug into your existing TVs that provides access to millions of movies, TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend of baseball, college baseball, uh, basketball tournament, you're going to want a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro sports and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more. Keep up to date. Latest world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. Learn more. Visit Amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. You, you said Duke it out. Um, by the way, shout out to Duke's. What what's Duke's doing? Just shout out to him. I just oh, I, I just for a second it, I right? thought you were shouting out the Duke men's basketball team. No, Duke's no. Dukes, no. Dukes no, that Dukes. we know. Yeah, uh, he's writing boy. a script. He's our, our boy. boy. He's Dukes. writing a script right now. Dukes, uh, you got any parts for your boys over here in your in your script? Listen, we could we could get on there. We could ask mix it me. up, Dukes. Ask me if I know. Just ask. What you're, I, I got method acting in me. Just ask, okay. Dukes. Okay, we get you on the pod. You get to see, see your you little see, movie. See how this, see works, how this works. All right. Listen, we might. Um, I like the defensive line. Actually, it wasn't one. It wasn't a group that came to my mind when I think about improvement. But I do think we're going to see it. I think these young defensive linemen, and we talked about them last week or earlier this week, or so they all run together. We talked about them on on the pod. I think they're going to make some noise. I think Jordan Hall. I've been saying it since last year. I've been saying it since his first game of his freshman year. I think Jordan Hall is going to be a problem. I think this is the year you're going to see Jordan Hall emerge. And I think you're going to see guys like Ingram Dawkins really step into their own. I think we know who Warren Brinson and Azir Sackhouse are, and so that's good, but that's not necessarily improvement. I don't see a ton of improvement out of them, but I do see improvement out of guys like Kristen Miller and Jordan yep. Hall and some yep. of these young guys um, that are coming up through the ranks and so i i don't hate that i like wide receiver it's kind of sneaky mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i wouldn't necessarily go but what about uh, well and I'll, I'll give you another one before i get to mine that i think that i think i'm i'm really kind of landing on i think you could go corner here and that that could scare some people <laughs> okay because we lose Kamari Lasseter. Yeah, he gone, Daniel. I don't know if you understand. Mm -hmm. We have the best cover guy that we had on the team last year. He's no longer in the same zip. And code. then what about the guy that was on the other side from him last year? <clears throat> uh, Clint, how'd that? How'd uh, he back? It, that I'm gl I am I am not going to disparage a man on this team, listen, but I do need yeah, my bucket so near. It's... Dalen Everett had a tough year at times last oh. year. Kamari Laster has gone now from last year's team. And I'm sitting here saying this is a lot like you, you know, saying that the wide receiver group is going to be improved okay. after Lad McConkey. I'm sorry. Is Lad McConkey walking through that door, Clint? No, no he, he certainly he is not. And so um, Randall, by the way, Randall, who's watching us. Yes, we understand Lad McConkey's in the NFL. Yes, we think he could be one of the top wide receivers in the league. Yes, Randall. I didn't stutter. I don't know who you are, Randall, but I'm going to keep going as if you don't exist because that was 
I was how I was working for me before, and I assume it's <laughs> going to continue working for me after. Um, all right. I think he, so. Hear me out on this. We lose First Kamari Lasseter, but Dalen Everett, I think, is about to make a leap. Not a not a jump, not a step forward. I think Dale and Everett Morgan's is about seismic. to make a leap, like a like a standing broad jump, like an Olympic size, like a Paris France Olympic size leap, is what they, that the Olympics. You worked, you worked yourself year. there. You, you were... I got there. Like I got there. I'm excited cake. about the Olympics. I love the summer. I, I just gathered that. Um, uh, I think Dale and Everett's going to make a big leap this year, and then I think on that other side. I think there's a lot of I think there's a lot of really strong contenders, some freshmen, but some not freshmen, some upperclassmen, some returning guys. Maybe you had a guy who went to the portal and then said, "Oh no, I don't want to be in the portal oh, anymore. No, no, I no, want no, to get." No, 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 no. What I meant was, I want to to not be in the portal. And you must have just not heard the not. You didn't, um, you didn't hear. You didn't hear that. I think I think corner could be improved. Let me give you. Let me give you my. My choice, though, for the unit that might be the most improved on this entire team, and we'll see what you think. What What about the offensive line? You mentioned yeah. them in the in the first segment. Yeah. I know that we lose. I mean, you want to talk about losing some talent? We lose Marius Mims. Okay, wow, we, that's already we lose Cedric Van Prant. I and again, I'm sad. What if I was to tell you that I am dead lock confident that this O-line is going to be better than last year's O-line? I mean, I, I, don't, would I, don't get, I don't get bet this. I would bet my life savings on it right now, Clint, that this O-line is going to be better you than know, last year's O-line. You know, as you're talking, as as I want to fight you on it, I'm going back to a, a couple rules we have on this podcast. Mm-hmm. One of the rules is Kirby's smart. You have to understand Kirbanese. And when he speaks, pay attention. Daniel, Hello. what has his words been so far about this offensive line? Yeah. He was asked about the guard position, and he said, I don't think about it in terms of right guard, left guard. And then he said, when you think about guard, you got – Dylan Fairchild, Michael Morris, and Tate Ratledge. And those three guys are just interchangeable parts. So – I heard everything I needed to hear right there. Those three guys for those two spots are going to just be a revolving door of dominating the opponent. And Tate Ratledge, tell me, was he good last year for us, Daniel? He's been good. He's been good for us. Okay. Every year. Every year he's been good. But so what you're saying is we have two more just like him. Uh-huh. Because they're Which interchangeable. Getting better. Yeah. And and he's better than what he was. That's so right. now we have three of the same better yeah. quality guys. Yeah. That sounds advantageous. So now Mims move does over th- to the left. Move over to the left there and, and tell me what you see. What do you see over there, Clint? I see another prototypical NFL franchise left tackle mm-hmm. who is just in the same mold that Georgia has pumped out for the last six years. So he's probably going to be. Equal to what he was last year is in better. your mind? Is it, oh Bet, yeah, because better. he was a true because he was a redshirt freshman last year. Okay. And so now he's had a whole year of SEC experience, whole year against the most dominant pass rushers in college football, and all of a sudden he comes back and every day in practice he's going up against Michael Williams okay. and Javon Walker. Yep. And so he's gonna be a heck of a lot better. And yeah. then you heard Kirby talk about Jared Wilson. Did no, you hear Kirby know. talk about Jared Wilson? No. <laughs> Did you know. hear that? Four out of the five positions, I will not fight you. I am beyond confident. I think Is that whoever position? they decide between. it Because it it's two names. It's it two is. names. It's Xavier Truss and it's Monroe Freely. Those are the two names. And I think I feel great about either one of them. I genuinely you- do. At right tackle... I feel great about either one of them. Do you know why? why? Because you got Oscar Delp in there. Yeah. Yeah. You throw, like you got you got a back checking off on that side. You got Carson Beck, who's plenty mobile in the pocket, who steps up, who moves around. Let's so I'm not worried about <clears throat> it. And then in the run game, Clint. Ooh, hello. Hello. Now, now all of a sudden your opinion of Xavier Truss has changed drastically. We're I have no problem. 
no. with Xavier going this way. I yeah. I have all it's when he needs to do this mm. that I begin fretting. But um, I like Monroe Freeling. I think he's got a real shot to win that job. We've liked what we've seen from him in the bowl game. Have, we've liked yes. what we've seen from him in his <clears throat> limited action. And so I think if he wins that job, I think we're going to feel great about it. And then you, you know, you end up with, you end up with a, a backup guard and a backup tackle in Xavier Truss and whoever's not in the game. Let's sure. call him Michael Morris for sure. whatever, you know, for right now. But you got basically seven O linemen in five spots. You're injury proof. You can withstand guys getting dinged and nicked up along the course of the year. There's not a significant drop off when guys do that. No, we already heard that Tate Ratledge has been repping at center, and so hey, really yo. across the board in any position, Georgia can withstand injury. I think this O line is going to be steady. I think they're going to be consistent, and I think you are going to see it pay huge dividends, particularly in the run game, because. Georgia has been one of the best pass protecting teams for the last two to three to four seasons of college football. Again, Ernest Green is just going to be another one of every single other Georgia. They just keep churning them out. Pass pro is not going to be a problem. Carson Beck's going to be clean this year. That horseshoe pocket is going to come back. The run game is going to be That's drastically where the improved. improvement. So when you talk about an improved unit, I think you look yeah, at I both sides disagree. of what the O line can do, and I think that's a that's a that's a potential right there. He is Daniel. I am Clint. Together we are locked on Bulldogs. We will see you guys next time. Thanks for being one ninety nine, being here with us. We'll talk to you guys then. See you.